Welcome to Learn the Stats. In this video, we're going to be going over the Pearson and Spearman correlation test. This was requested by a commenter from another video, and so here we are. I'm doing this video. If you have a suggestion, please leave it down in the comment section. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe. It helps a great deal with the channel. I'm going to be going over the assumptions for both, and then I'm going to go through some graphs to show you how to interpret what's going on and then how that relates to the correlation coefficient for both. So the first thing is for Pearson, you have the letter R and R is the same R used in R squared. So you just square it and you get R squared. Uh, that's what gives you kind of an indicator of how strong a test is between two variables uh, or several variables in the dependent variable. And for Spearman, you have the Greek letter Rho or RS. In both cases, they have a scale of from negative one to one in correlation. Negative one meaning they have an inverse relationship. That is to say, as one increases, the other decreases. And positive one being as one increases, the other variable also increases. And lastly, zero just means there's no correlation. For Pearson, you're only looking at continuous variables that have a linear relationship. In Spearman, you're looking at what's called monatomic variables, that is continuous or ordinal. A definition to clarify the relationship of monatomic variables is as one increases, the other doesn't decrease. Or inversely, you have as one variable increases, the other variable never increases. And so it's really important you don't have something like a quadratic function going through there where it both increases and decreases as one variable increases because then that shows that there isn't a monatomic relationship. Pearson is normally distributed. Spearman is non-parametric. So what does, what does that mean? Non-parametric means that it doesn't assume a distribution. It's great for when you have a relatively small sample. You're not necessarily able to use like the central limit theorem uh, and they're continuous, but when you use a Pearson, the correlation is kind of going all over the place because uh, the sample size is so small and the variability is so high. And so what do you do? Well, a non-parametric test is what you would do that assumes no distribution of the data. For Pearson, it requires homoscedasticity for the error terms. That is that the variability is roughly the same between the independent and dependent variables. For Spearman's, it's important to note that the variables are actually ranked variables. They aren't the variables as they are. So there's a ranking that has to happen before all of this analysis is done. And the reason why I'm putting this at the end as opposed to the beginning is because it's easier to understand what's being said from the inverse relationships and all the other things that match or are pretty close to what most people are already familiar with. In the first graph, we see what's probably the default for when people think of a linear relationship. It's a positive increasing relationship. There's both the Pearson and Spearman coefficient, and in it, there's plus one plus one. Because, like I said, with the mon not monatomic relationship, as one increases, the other one doesn't decrease. And nowhere does it decrease there. Whereas with the Pearson, for every interval, there's an increase at about the same rate. The second one you see kind of like this sideways S shape or sideways two shape. I mean, I guess however you look at it, you know, it looks sideways. It initially starts going up and then it kind of flattens out and then continues to go up. For the Pearson, as you're increasing, you're not always increasing at the same rate. And so that matters to Pearson. For Spearman, as it increases, it never decreases, and that's what matters. And so you see this positive one because there's never a decrease. It's just it flattens, and that's why that plus one is still plus one looking like that. The third graph here kind of shows no distribution. For both Pearson and Spearman, there doesn't seem to be anything that shows a strong relationship, which is why both of them have a value of negative 0 0.093 because there does seem to be somewhat of a downward trend, but there's no clear 
relationship that's present. The fourth one is the inverse of the first one. As one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So Pearson has a negative one because the increase and decrease are approximately the same. And Spearman is negative one because again, it has that general relationship of as it increases, the other variable never increases. So it always decreases or stays the same. The fifth graph here shows a very strong negative relationship uh, for both Pearson and Spearman. But like before, because the intervals are not the same in terms of how much they decrease, you get this variability in the Pearson. So instead of being a negative one, you have negative 0.799. Whereas Spearman, because it's always going down, as one of the variables increases, the other variable always decreases. And so because of that, the Spearman is negative one. The last graph goes over a nonlinear relationship. It is basically an inverse quadratic function. It's fairly strong, but because the Pearson looks at linear functions, or rather linear interactions and not quadratic interactions, the coefficient would end up being zero. The same is for Spearman. The coefficient would be zero because as one variable increases, the other decreases and then increases, which goes against the monotonic relationship. So if you thought this video was helpful, if you thought my explanations were good, please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you for watching and stay nerdy, my friends.